be seated. <clears throat> we'll just share in a moment's silence as we prepare ourselves to hear Rachel's message this morning. Good morning and a very warm welcome to this service, this all age worship service. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. What is Lent? You can do my work for me today. What is Lent? Val. 40 days in the wilderness. 40 days in the wilderness. 40 days in the wilderness. We in the church have a 40-day period to get ready for Easter. If you think about a traffic light, what does red mean? Green means? Amber means? Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. It means get ready. And so that is what Lent is. Lent is our amber season. We are getting ready for Easter. Now, has anyone decided to do anything in particular for Lent? Has anyone taken something up or not? Kath? Uh, there's a really good thing on Facebook from Tesco. Yeah. Uh, giving something you place to food bank. Yes, I'm doing that too. So the Tesco and uh, the Brain Tree Food Bank are doing like an ad Lent calendar so where you give something each day for the food bank brilliant has anybody else taken anything up or not for lent no not wow it is a time to think about what we can do to get ready to prepare and make room in our lives for god now the theme of today's service is about being under pressure Dun 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 diddle dun, dun. I was going to play it, and I thought, oh, is that going to cause copyright problems? But I'm not going to sing it to you either. Anyway, today we are looking at Jesus being tempted in the desert. He was put under pressure, and we're going to be thinking about what does that show us about how to live when we are under pressure. So, we're going to sing our first hymn this morning, number 160 in the books. 40 days and 40 nights.
don't worry. It is an art form trying to get this to work beautifully. Would you like to sit down as we come to our confession? Jesus comes to earth to set us free from the things we think and feel and do and say that aren't loving to God. And they're the things the Bible calls sin. When we come to him and say sorry, God offers to give us a forgiveness and a whole new start. So we're going to do like our confession with our hands again this morning. Please do copy the gestures I'm making if you'd like to. Let's make a fist. Lord Jesus, we are sorry for the times that we have been angry with other people. Let's point away from ourselves with our index finger. Lord, we are sorry for the times that we have judged others without recognising how much is also wrong in us. Close up your hand and hold it to your chest. Lord, we are sorry for the times we have kept things selfishly to ourselves and have not been prepared to give to those who need our help. Now we put our hands over our mouths. Lord, we are sorry for the foolish words we have spoken which have hurt other people. Now we put a hand on our hearts again. Lord, we are sorry for not showing others how much we love and appreciate them. We put our hands on our wrists like we're looking at our watch. Lord, we are sorry for not spending time with you. Now, I'd like to invite you to hold your hands open like you're going to receive something. And what you're about to receive is God's assurance of forgiveness for you. When we say sorry, God is merciful and loving and will forgive us. So may the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of his Spirit all our days. Amen. The collect is like the theme of the day, the prayer of the day. So this is the collect for today's service. Heavenly Father, your son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days of Lent to grow in wisdom and prayer, that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I have something in this bag here. I wonder if you've ever seen one of these before. (laughs) Put your hand up if you've seen one of these before. Some of you. Does anyone know what one of these does? Yeah. It stretches. Do you want to come up? No? Does anyone want to come and see how much this man stretches? Stephen, yeah? Well, you can do one arm. Do you want to do the other one? How strong are you feeling? (laughs) (laughs) It's what I'm going to. (laughs) I never had one of these. Whoa, 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 I wasn't ready, I wasn't braced. Stephen, do you want to hold the other one? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, let's even get it. Ready? How far can he stretch? How far can he stretch? I shouldn't have, shouldn't have done a risk assessment. Right? <laughs> okay. Whoa. He stretches an awful lot. Do you think his legs stretch? Oh, it's gone round. It's gone round. I think it does go back to where it's supposed to be. Yeah, look. He gets back into shape. If only the rest of it was like that, wasn't it? Anyone, do you want to try his legs? Oh, it's hard to decay, great, ready? Oh! Very, very stretched. And it just goes back into shape. Thank you very much. 
chief stretchers. This man can withstand a lot of stretching. How much stretching can you stand? I wonder, think back on this last week. How have you felt stretched? How have you felt out of shape? What pressures have you felt that you've been under? What we're going to be thinking about today is Jesus, how he is put under such pressure when he's in the desert. <laughs> but he manages to withstand that pressure, stay true to God and just stay strong. So that's what we're going to be learning about today. Thank you. Thank you, stretchy man. <laughs> So, as we remember what Jesus did for us, we sing our next song, which is number 162, From Heaven You Came.
you listen to our reading, please do be seated. A reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered round him was so large that he got into a boat and sat on it out on the lake, while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying thirty, some sixty, some a hundred times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing, but never perceiving, and ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The word of the Lord. Thank you, Paul. Now, the reading I had is actually slightly different to that one. So I'm just going to read you a bit of that reading, if that's okay. This is the story of the temptation of Jesus. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan. And he was led by the Spirit into the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil and he ate nothing during those days. And at the end of them, he was very, very hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the special son of God, turn these stones into bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. And then the devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone that I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the special son of God, he said, throw yourself down from him, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him 
and to hear the opportune time. Jesus was put under pressure. Can we see what this picture is? Can you see? It's not coming a very clearly, is it? Can anyone recognise who that is? <laughs> somebody can, somebody else can. Oh, thank goodness. It's good. Right, who is that? Louisa. That's Louisa. Louisa. Where's Louisa from? Encanto. 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 Who has seen the Disney movie Encanto? Okay. Well, I won't give all the spoilers here, but I'm going to use the story of Louisa in Encanto to help us think about Jesus's temptations. Now, what is Louisa known for in Encanto? Yeah. She's strong. If you can see, hopefully it will come up later. She has biceps and a humongous. Louisa is very strong. So Encanto is the story about the amazing Madrigals. They are a Colombian family that all have magical powers. Each of them has a different magical power to help them serve the community. So one of them can talk to animals. One of them can shapeshift. What can another one do? Look into the future. Louisa's power is to be strong. She can move churches. She can move donkeys. She can move bridges. She does what she can with all her strength. There she is. You can see her lifting the donkey there to serve the community. Louisa is strong. Now, I'm not going to tell you the whole story, I said that, but there's a point in the film where their magic begins to fade and they lose some of their powers. And Louisa sings a song about being under pressure. She has been the strong one. She has done everything for the community that she can in her own strength. And as her powers fade, she has a bit of an identity crisis. She sings a song, Who am I if I can't carry it all? Who am I if I can't carry it all? For so long, she has done everything for everybody else. And I wonder if we sometimes feel like we have to be like Louisa. We have to be strong to keep strong and to stay strong for everyone else, even though we actually need some help. Let's remember our story today. Jesus was in the desert. Has anyone ever been to a desert? Yeah? What was the boss of desert like? hot. It's hot in the day. Has anyone ever been there at night? Cold. It's cold at night. <laughs> really hot in the day. Freezing cold at night. What else is a desert like? Sandy. 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 Yes. The wind blows over it and it changes the shape of the desert as well. So it's very easy to get lost in a desert. It's hot. It's cold. It's sandy. There's not a lot there, is there, in the desert? There's not a lot there in the desert. There's not a lot of food. There's not a lot of water. The desert is a strange place. It's a wild place. You only go there if you have to. Jesus goes to the desert. And he goes there because he wants to spend time with God on his own. But he meets the evil one who tries to stretch him, who tries to put him under pressure. Jesus hasn't had food for 40 days. He is hungry. How are you when you're hungry? Are you very reasonable people? No. No. <laughs> no. You're not. I am definitely not. Jesus has been stretched. He's not had any food. And the devil says, here, make these stones bread. Jesus wonders, but Jesus says, no. Jesus has been on his own for 40 days. How are you when you make decisions when you've been on your own for a long time? Do you make good decisions? No. Jesus is stretched. 
he is being stretched and the devil says to him, I will, why don't you fall off this temple, fall off and God's angels will catch you and then everyone will know you're the special son of God. And Jesus wonders, hmm, now then everybody would know and would follow me. But he says, no. And then Jesus is tempted again, again. It's not once, twice, three times. He goes to the top of a mountain. I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world if you bow down and worship me. Jesus thinks, well, I wonder, I do want to be king. But no, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus is stretched. The devil comes to him when he is hungry, <coughs> when he is lonely, when he is tired. That's hard. I wonder, do you think you could withstand temptations if you had gone through that? No. I don't think. I definitely couldn't. I definitely couldn't. Thing is interesting. How does Jesus stop the temptations? What does Jesus do to stop them? Rob? Willpower. Willpower. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Do you say? He listened to God. Yeah. Willpower. He listened to God. That those two things come together. Jesus' will was aligned with God. Together. He chose to focus on God. He knew the scriptures. He knew the Bible. So he knew who God was and who he was. He knew what to do. He could stand strong. So Jesus shows us how we can resist the voices that want us to turn away from God. But I think we can make a mistake here. I think we can look at Jesus and think, well, that's how I've got to be. I've got to be strong like Jesus. He is so strong. I've got to try harder to be more like him. Like Louisa, I've got to try harder, keep going, be stronger. But I want to tell you there is a more gentle way. There is a better way that God invites us in. We can't do this by our own strength. We can't withstand temptations and challenges and pressures on our own. We need help. Jesus, we see, he's fully human and fully God. He withstands temptations. He's strong in God's strength. But Jesus gives us that spirit to help us stand strong. It's not about trying to be stronger, trying harder, trying to be better. It's saying one word, help. Let's say it together, help. It's a really easy word to say, isn't it? it comes out of the mouth all right, but actually getting to that point is very hard. Help. When we are tempted, we need to remember that word, <coughs> help. When we think we just try harder, keep going, stay stronger, we need to remember, help. Lord, I can't do this. I'm not strong. I feel weak. Help. In Encanto, the whole family, this whole magical family, have to learn to accept help. And so do we. We need God's help. <coughs> I wonder if this is like your week, is like your pressures. I wonder what pressures you feel like you've been under. Perhaps stress at work, perhaps family life is just really hard right now. Perhaps we're worried about this church. Perhaps we are feeling sick. Perhaps we are worried about the state of the world and for good reason. There are so many reasons why we could feel stretched and under pressure this morning. I'd like to invite you to invite God in to say help and to receive God's help. 
You have a post-it note, I believe, with you, and you should have a pen as well. And what I'd like to invite you to do is to think back on your week and think about whatever struggle or wilderness that you are in and you are facing, remembering that God can help us. You might want to write on your post-it note whatever that struggle is, whatever ways you're under pressure. Do you have to show it to anybody? I'm not going to go looking. No one else is. You're going to fold that up when you're ready and come forward and place it here as a sign of offering it up to the one who can help us, the only one who can help us withstand temptations and pressures. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary, all you who are burdened, and I will give you rest. So come, write your struggle on a post note and offer it up to God for help. Suzanne's going to sing.
it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well with me. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Lord God, we need your help. Take all these burdens that we have been carrying. Lord Jesus, we trust them to you. We ask for your provision, that you would give us your gift of peace, and that we would know you and know your strength when we come to the end of our own. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we come now to the Creed. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come now to our prayers. I'm going to give you space in the prayers for you to make your own requests. And then we'll bring it, them together, each bidding will weave them together with the words, I'll say, Lord Jesus, and you say, help. Lord Jesus, help. I'm going to use our hands again to help us in our prayers. Take a look at your thumb. This is the strongest digit on your hand. We give thanks for all the strong things in our lives. All the things that are good and sustaining and supporting. The things that keep us rooted. We pray for those who feel like they are very weak. Lord Jesus, help. We look at our index finger now, our pointing finger. We pray for all those people and things in our lives who, help, who guide and help us. We pray for friends, teachers, doctors, nurses, emergency services, and others on our hearts who help us. Thank you, Lord, for all those who give out to others. We pray that they too would know your help. Lord Jesus, help. Come now to our middle finger, our tallest finger. We pray for all the important people who have power in the world. World leaders and their governments, members of parliament, our, our royal family, and other world leaders and their governments. We pray, Lord Jesus, for all those who have power over war and power over peace. We pray that they would not listen to the voice of the evil one bent on destruction 
but they would follow your ways of peace. Lord Jesus, help. Come now to our ring finger. This is the weakest finger on our hand. It can't do much by itself. We pray for the poor, the weak, the helpless, the hungry and sick and tired, and the bereaved. Lord God, we particularly pray for those in the Ukraine. Please bring deliverance. Please bring peace. Please bring those safely to a brighter future. Lord Jesus, help. The little finger, our smallest and last finger on our hand. So finally, we pray for ourselves for all that is going on in our lives, the good and the things that are hard. We give them over to Jesus. <coughs> Lord Jesus, help. And we bring our prayers to the close in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we come now to our notices. Does anyone have any notices they'd like to give? Yeah? Lisa, come on. Um, I did mention last week, but for some of those of you that weren't here last week, um, I need to do new gift aid declarations. So anybody who makes a regular donation, either through um, online, through contactless or through cheque, if you are a taxpayer and you would like me to claim gift aid on your donation, please see me afterwards because I have some new declarations for you to sign. And also, if you currently don't give regularly and you would like to, I have got some information for you. Thank you. Please do speak to Lisa if you feel able to do so. One of the things that we are asking for help as, as a church, is our finances, which have got into a bit of a tricky situation. So any ways that you could help would be most appreciated. We have a Lent course starting here on Tuesday lunchtimes. It's going to be from 12.30 to 1.30ish, just out there in the hall. It's called Growing Good. It's going to be about growing good in our communities and thinking about what we can do as a church to share and show the love of Jesus to more people in practical ways to help. Please bring your own lunch. <laughs> um, we are also going to be taking this time of Lent to be praying for our church to grow, not just in, um, in spiritual depth, and in good in our communities, but also in numbers. So could I invite you to join with me in praying this prayer? God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, joy to our worship, and power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our local community, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today, you've given over some of your burdens to God, and we want to give you something to go home with. And Jesus knew his Bible.
So we've got different Bible verses to give you on your way out of the church. So please do pick one up. We really hope and pray that it speaks to you and anchors you this week, helping you to know God's presence with you right where you are. Amelia's ready. It's time for our final song. <laughs> We're going to be singing My Song is Love Unknown, which is song 478. brings the offertory box forward. We give thanks for the gifts that have been given and the gifts that will be given. Thank you. Lord God, accept our offering of money this day, but also the offering of our lives. Help us to live simply, generously and courageously that our lives may point to you. And may these gifts be a blessing to us here and the wider community. Amen. Let us ask for God's blessing upon us all as we go from here. God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Let us bless one another in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen.